Hey guys, it's Sandeep from Revac Lives, and uh, in this particular video, I'd like to show you how to go about editing some of your photos, particularly related to product photography, or if you're making thumbnails uh, related to products on YouTube. So editing is a really, really integral part of photography, especially when you want to make stuff look good. Uh, don't let people say that editing is uh, less impressive or makes any photo look uh, less impressive just because you've edited it. Because it's like telling a chef, have you actually cooked the vegetables or have you actually combined them together? If a chef didn't actually do his stuff, you, all you would get is just raw ingredients. So essentially, this is similar to cooking. You have to kind of take whatever raw stuff that you get and process it in order to get the best possible photo. And photography is about making stuff look good just as it is about, uh, you know, the process of enjoying photography, the process of editing, etc. In olden days, the process of editing or processing, post-processing is kind of a better term to uh, use when you're talking about editing. So this post-processing has become a bit different nowadays. Earlier you had film where you had to process the film and stuff like that and now you have digital photos which uh, also requires processing in order to get the kind of output that you want. So uh, I'll be talking about uh, the thumbnails that we have on Revitless. If you guys have seen, many of you have asked like how we come up with all these different thumbnails and stuff. Uh, it looks quite attractive yet minimalistic at the same time. So it's it's not uh, you know one single type of processing or editing that we do. We do a bunch of different stuff, but at the core of all this is that we capture photos in RAW that gives us the highest quality possible and it also allows us to manipulate the image to the kind of look that we need to get. So obviously even though you're shooting in RAW and you're gonna edit it, it's always important to get the shot as good as possible in the beginning itself so that you know you kind of can make it even better through the process of editing or post-processing. So uh, things to keep in mind is that you always need to have uh, you know the proper focus, you need to have everything sharp, avoid uh, object shakes or blurring uh, through ham hand movements and stuff like that. And uh, when and wherever possible shoot in RAW because that gives you more ability to play with the image after the fact. So uh, I'm going to start off with uh, the thumbnail of uh, you know a video that we're going to do pretty soon. So it's actually of the Oppo R17 Pro and uh, this was taken, you can see a thumbnail here, this is raw. You can see that this is how we start off with. It's a pretty basic uh, image, it was captured in raw on the Sony Alpha A6500. And uh, you can see there's a bunch of stuff wrong with it. Uh, it actually looks a bit better in camera compared to what you would see in real life. It looks a bit brighter in camera uh, and on the video than what is there in real life. But essentially um, this showcases how you can kind of make that image even better and get a good result uh, which you could use as a thumbnail or on your social media etc. So let me start off by saying that I'm using Photoshop Express. This is on the iPad Pro 11 inch and uh, I usually do this uh, on my computer, uh, the PC at home or on the MacBook Pro or when it's really really tight and I have to uh, kind of do it on the go then I use my phone also but this is also available on the iPad Pro and I thought that it would also be a good idea to showcase the processing abilities of the iPad Pro in this particular video. So now on to the editing bit. I'll start off by saying that this image is a bit underexposed and uh, there are a few reasons why you would want to underexpose or overexpose a photo but in this particular case it was kind of underexposed because we didn't want uh, to bump up the ISO unnecessarily and we also had limited time with the particular phone so we couldn't really play much with the settings to get the most optimal results. But nonetheless considering that you're going to be using it for the thumbnail and you can actually tweak it. To your liking so uh, Photoshop is kind of very intelligent in that way so you can either go to the exposure and manually t tweak it yourself or you can even go for the auto option so I'll try with auto because that's going to be easy for you guys as well so as soon as I hit auto you can see that there's a huge change it automatically fixes the exposure issue now this is something that you can do manually also by just you know moving the slider here and there you can make it darker or more depending on how your photo is 
but it's always better to kind of underexpose the image because you get a much better dynamic range that way it's more difficult to get information out of the highlights than it is from the shadows of course uh, getting the exposure on point would be the best considering that the noise won't uh, be added in case you decide to you know bump it up in post nonetheless this is where we start with the exposure then we can possibly go on to the highlights it seems like the highlights are a bit high over here it's a bit overexposed so i want to bring it down just a bit uh, just about there and it seems right then go to the shadows if you notice that the area around here around the camera lens is a bit dark so i'd like to kind of enhance that and bring a bit more detail from the shadows there not to make it too bright but a bit better so that i can actually see all the details around uh, the lenses and can see that there are three lenses in fact on the r17 pro now i also don't like the fact that bumping up the shadows a lot kind of uh, makes it a bit too flat so i'm going to go into the blacks and just adjust a little bit very very little bring down the black so that there's a bit more contrast there we'll be playing with the contrast further again but uh, now back to clarity so clarity essentially adds a feeling of depth to your entire image it uh, kind of makes it uh, you know more prominent and seems that the object will stand out so i'm going to adjust this a bit i'm going to bring it around 35 or thereabouts yeah so that seems better then i'm going to go into a dehaze feature uh, dehaze feature is basically used primarily of course when there's a haze or there's a mist or some sort of a visual filter by dust in the air and stuff like that but then you can also use it in certain situations if you want to enhance the colors enhance the details of the subject so i'm going to just bring it up a bit to 15 yeah there about and uh, now comes the sharpness so image is already pretty sharp considering that the focus is right and everything is done well but i'm going to just adjust the sharpness and bring it up to maybe 55 uh, the issue with sharpness if you overdo it is that it introduces much more noise into the image so since i did bring it up i'm going to just smooth in things off a bit by increasing the luminance um, by reducing the luminance noise and doing the same thing with the color noise as well so that adds a slight smoothness to the entire thing but for most purposes you wouldn't really notice the difference and it still looks pretty good now we'll come back to the contrast here and we'll just increase it a bit yeah so now the last step and this is something that i believe is uh probably not necessary in most instances in this especially it looks kind of good as it is but uh we like to think of ourselves as perfectionists so we kind of go uh beyond the regular sort of uh, editing and kind of make sure that each and every image is perfect so for that what we basically do is that we kind of remove all these small issues so when you zoom into the image you can see that there are spots where there's dust so regardless of how clean you try and keep the smartphone there's always going to be tiny specks of dust which kind of looks bad if you zoom in but on most thumbnails is not even noticeable but i still like to remove it anyway so you can go to the spot removal tool you can adjust the size of the spot so in this case it's very small these spots here so i need something around this size at max so all i have to do is just tap it there and it removes it uh through the you know uh, intelligent feature which actually kind of looks at the proximity and matches the color and stuff it's kind of difficult on this phone especially because uh, this has varying colors and textures here especially if there was a point somewhere here it would be very difficult to actually kind of fix it but uh, most of the things seem to be focused on the other area so it should work out pretty well Yeah so here if you notice there is a slight change in color here but it's not really noticeable unless you pixel peep so i would rather have the dust removed than uh, than it be on there you know so i'm going ahead with that 
and this this can be a pretty t tedious process is obviously a bit faster if you do it on a more powerful uh, desktop or a laptop or something like that and if you want you can even choose to ignore it because most of the time on social media and uh, wherever you're going to post it unless you're taking you know proper prints or large versions of it or even posting full resolution photos you won't even notice the difference over here but it essentially just makes the image cleaner and at least you know you can satisfy you know that little person inside you which you know is triggered by OCD and we are almost done with it just a few more taps and then we should be good to go and I think that is it I don't see any much issues with the box also and yeah and that's about it with the entire edit you can choose to kind of play further with the edit and make things a bit uh, more interesting for example some people like to add a vignette so let's try that also so let's add a slight black vignetting this also kind of emphasizes the phone itself over here kind of uh, leading your eyes towards the phone in that direction so perhaps the vignette is not such a bad idea also so let's look at the before and after so if you tap this it'll show you the before this is how we started and this is what we end up with so I'll give you full resolution uh, files uh, in the description you can check out both these files and I'll even give you guys the same raw image so you can actually use this raw image tweak it to your liking uh, give me links uh, you know to your images whatever you guys have edited you can try your own different mix there's several other tools also you can play with there's fade there's grain there's vibrant saturation you can adjust all this uh, but I, I essentially didn't want to deviate too much from the original look of the phone that's why I didn't play with these things but you can go crazy literally crazy with all these things uh, and I think that overall it looks pretty good so I'm gonna kind of uh, give you guys uh, the raw files you can edit it you can post uh, your edited photos as well and uh, let's see let's have fun basically with this so hope you guys like this video let me know if you want more such videos on how to edit stuff or uh, you know how you can process photos or any other tutorials regarding photography but this we thought was a pretty decent start so thanks for watching see you again in the next one